Hi, my name is Chart Gal Lori, and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. I've been a trader and technical analyst for the last eight and a half years. So we're going to cover market action from Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Let's make my face smaller and let's look at some charts. Very interesting data. Day. We had data move us today. So if we look at today's data, we had the ADP non-farm payrolls, which wasn't a big move. 945 S&P global PMI, not a big move. 10 a.m. we had a big move. Let's go look at that on the chart. So that would be 8 a.m. here, right there. We really moved the market with that data. It was it was perceived as positive. However, we proceeded to give almost all of it back. So what are we doing on the daily chart? We still have a lower low. We don't have a confirmed downtrend, but we do have the lower low. And we're closing with a daily inside bar. And that's distinctly different from SPY. SPY does not have an inside bar because we don't trade 23 hours on SPY. So I would just point you to ES daily inside bar and lots of misdirection on shorter term time frames. Do you see the misdirection? Probing for liquidity. Speaking of liquidity, what was the volume today? 42 million, we're closing in 13 minutes. So we have low volume. When you have an inside day, you have low volume because the big boys step back and say, okay, what's happening? What's gonna go on? And we're gonna wait until the big money decides. NASDAQ, daily end sidebar, holding the daily 50 EMA, holding the daily 26 EMA. Lots of misdirection on lower time frames. QQQ did not have a daily end sidebar because again, it doesn't trade 23 hours a day. And we have lower volume on QQQ. Let's go look at econ events. This could change tomorrow. So tomorrow we have initial jobless claims and then Friday, we have the non-farm payrolls right there, non-farm payrolls, which could move the market. We have bank earnings that start next Friday, and then we have technology earnings that start the next week. So as always, we have lots of catalysts that can move the market around. I would say this is a victory. ES, we got the lower low. Bulls didn't get a ton of follow through, and we're closing the day with an inside bar. NQ. We're holding the daily 26 EMA, the daily 50 EMA. Haven't, bears haven't gotten a ton of follow through. RTY, we've got a daily lower low, holding the daily 26 EMA. And I can make an argument that this is a daily double bottom. Same thing with Dow. We only broke that double bottom by $23. On a $39,000 instrument, that's a daily double bottom. And we're holding the daily 50 EMA. VIX weakened as we went through the day. We are now below the hourly EMA. So we had an EQ, we broke bear. That's good for the market overall. Bitcoin. Bitcoin did a whole lot of nothing today. We're up $483, been the big scheme of things. It's pretty flat. We have enough room for a potential weekly higher low relative to 60771. We lost the daily 26 EMA, but we do have the daily 50 EMA here at 63,121. Four hour is in a downtrend. Hourly is pretty sideways with the 50 EMA overhead. I call that the Great Wall of Louisiana, the hourly 50 EMA. Coin, try to get something going. We broke over coin, try to get something going. Okay. Just stop, stop me right now. So we are still over the prior day high. We're closing the day with a 30 minute EQ. At this point, it was stronger than Mara and much stronger than Riot. So Mara, we're approaching the low of yesterday and low of day, 1946 double bottom. Riot, we broke through the low of the prior day. So the miners are just not getting the treatment that COIN and MSTR are getting. Dollar, this weakness was really welcome. So let's go back to the weekly chart. So on the weekly chart, we broke this 104.976 by 13 cents, not even, 12.124. So almost 13 cents, we broke the weekly resistance. That is not a bull break. That is a double top. And the commodity bulls just really pounced on it. GDX had an outstanding standing day. You're like, oh, two, three, 2.3%, whatever. Look at Nugget, up 4.63%. Big bullish day on GDX and gold had another new all-time high. 
over yesterday's high, plenty of room for an hourly higher low, plenty of room for a four hour higher low. But let's give credit where credit's due. Silver stole the show. We talked about this yesterday. I know I talked about it more in TCG than I did on public videos. And I sometimes fall victim to that where I think I've covered it with y'all, but I only covered it with TCG. But this weekly bull break, yeah, I mean, this is amazing. What a move. So if we look at this on the monthly, look at the squeeze, monthly bull break on silver. Gold already had that monthly bull break. It had it March 1st, well, this month. So it had it last month. And so now silver's playing catch up, but it's playing catch up in a really big way. And this is a risk on environment. People are like, hey, I, I want some of this. I wanna like offset some of my uh, positions. So I wanna buy silver, I wanna buy gold, I wanna buy Bitcoin. And silver just really outperformed today. Congrats to the silver bulls. FCX has been a name that I've been outlining or calling out here just an ideal monthly EQ that broke bull and I'm watching it again I had a position but I want to pull back by it doesn't have to come back to the trend line but I do want to pull back by for a monthly higher low this is a really healthy chart with a really nice squeeze and these squeezes the more I outline them the more people are like hey do you have any of those squeezes like I'm telling you they are unbelievable really great indicators of compression and pressure building. It doesn't mean it's always going to break bull or bear, but it does mean, because it's a directionless indicator, but it does mean if you have a break, you should have some good follow through. I covered LAC yesterday. Dan started a position and so did I on this daily EQ and it still looks strong. We have Apple. Apple is just an embarrassment. I mean, we did get over the prior day high and we're closing green, but we have earnings coming up April 25th. Apple and Tesla, they've got to have their heads down in just absolute shame. They've been unable to get anything meaningful going. Microsoft is closing pretty fat, or not fat, flat. <laughs> Potential daily head and shoulders, potential weekly bull flag, new all-time high. It's just not a new all-time high today, but a new all-time high the week of March 18th. Just the overall strong chart. And Tesla is not one of those. Potential weekly bear flag. Semis, potential weekly bull flag. We're going sideways on the daily, holding the 12 EMA. No major concerns yet. AMD is struggling with a daily 50 MA overhead. Just can't get over it. And I would put that on my chart. If it's something you don't normally follow, I'd put it on my chart. We do have a four hour squeeze. Actually, I'm gonna write this down for tomorrow. I love my squeezes to see if AMD can pop over that daily 50 MA if we were to have a bullish day tomorrow. We have Intel closing near the low of day, losing support. Super weak. One of these things is not like the other one. Intel and their super chips for AI, they just haven't proven themselves. We have the daily 200 MA approaching at 39.52. NVIDIA. We got over yesterday's high of day, but kind of got clipped with a karate chop to the throat. And now we have a 15 minute downtrend on NVIDIA. I think this is okay. If NVIDIA bulls want to take a break on the four hour chart and go sideways, then all power to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. SMCI had a stronger day than NVIDIA has given a lot of it back. We're down here testing prior day high. Non SMCI, this could be a huge daily head and shoulders. So bulls be careful with this name. Let's get into the craziness. I mean, the bullishness. ACB. There's always a bull name somewhere. It doesn't like, uh, what's his name? Can't think of his name. Kramer. Doesn't he say that there's a bullish market somewhere? Well, that bullish market somewhere is ACB. It is marijuana. Marijuana is on fire and ACB with a huge move today up 44%. What is the short float of ACB? And you can look it up on uh, FinViz. You don't have to be a subscriber. 25%. So we do have a little bit of a short squeeze 
on these bulls. They're just getting trapped. CGC up almost 30% today. We've got a daily higher high. Back burner, back burner, back burner, back burner. So tomorrow, you don't even need, I don't have a pregame show, but if you're a TCG member, I'll give you the Queen of the Mountain trades, but you don't even need the Queen of the Mountain trades. All of these names that went more than 15, 20% today, they are automatically on back burner watch. That's how we make our money. Cron what had a high compression squeeze. It was a queen of the mountain trade today. And we're closing up near the high of day. Great performance. We have GRWG. Daily higher high, daily bull flag confirmed. ATAI, that this is a psychedelic name. Again, back burner watch tomorrow. And y'all, just let me tell you. So here's the marijuana channel. Look at I mean, sometimes it can be quiet, but wow, look at today's feedback. These people are all over it. And I say these people, they're my friends. And I'm not an expert on it, and I'm constantly watching their posts, adding to my watch list so I can stay as up-to-date as possible. We're closing with an hourly bull flag potential on ATAI, MNMD, potential hourly bull flag, nice performance, daily bull break. Weekly bull break, weekly bull flag confirmed. CMPS, they had an upgrade this week. They are not as healthy on the weekly. We're looking for a weekly lower high compared to 1275. So don't get lost in the sauce on that one. MSOS, we're up here testing 1064. We haven't got through that, gotten through that yet. A weekly lower high is still possible. Nice bull volume, pretty about average today. SNDL. I don't normally cover this one, but they, that daily bull flag confirming today was a beaut. Nice bull volume, almost four times the average. Look at that volume. Back burner watch tomorrow. Tilray, this was my name. So excuse the messiness. So this morning, six hours ago, I had Cron and Tilray on my squeeze list. So we had Tilray with a high compression squeeze. You see those orange dots going sideways. And I'm like, I'm in like Flynn. And on the live stream, I took the trade at 238. That wasn't the best entry. We were down there testing 233. Anything close to 233 was a better entry. My second scale out, I took at 265, Queen of the Mountain trade. And I'm carrying over one position. So Tilray, again, what was the trigger here? We have a huge squeeze on the hourly. That's why I'm like, mm, can you have any more of those squeezes? But we were looking for a daily higher low. And I want to be out of this before next week in earnings. But this is what you want. These are dream setups. XLF, we broke the low of the prior day. It's really having a very lackadaisical day. But however, we're still in a daily uptrend. Earnings start tomorrow. XLV, we're holding the daily 50 MA. We had some uh, healthcare news today, and they broke to a lower low. We'll see if XLV can get a bounce going. And then I'd be remiss not to cover uranium. Uranium, what a day. This is extreme bull force. 50% of the uh, 40 percent of the average volume approaching 5133 and UEC. A weekly lower high as possible compared to 834. Their volume was about 60, 70, 80, about 80% of average. Beautiful day. Bulls are in charge. All right, I think that's it for the recap. I know a lot of you are wanting more from this recap, and I appreciate that feedback that you're giving me. I always want to bring you my best, and I work on it as hard as possible. Give me a follow on X, at Chargalvory. TCG members, I'll give you my Queen of the Mountain trades tomorrow, and I will forever be looking to improve this market recap to bring you the best that I know how. Thanks for being here, and you stop losses.